this dream I have is to create a company that has two main components in it, um, and both involve healing through music. The first main component is I play for cancer patients at cancer centers um, and their home if they're too sick, and it's playing inspirational music and songs that are meaningful to them. So you would pick a song or pick um, a genre, and I would learn the music and then go play for them. Or it could even be less um, detailed than that, just going and playing for them and making a personal dedication. Um, a lot of times I could do it in the hospitals, in the main lobby area, um, and or in homes for people who are too sick to actually leave their home. Um, but the whole gist of the playing for the person is just to give them some peace of mind and some ease for just a few minutes throughout their day. One side of it that is very meaningful to me and it is to learn, to be able to teach cancer patients, um, specifically ca children battling cancer, how to play the harp. Um, and it means so much to me because I learned how to play at such a young age and it was one of those things where the first time I really plucked the harp and the sound just resonated out from it, I was just felt empowered and that's something I want to give back to these children who are fighting this fight and struggling every day with it, um, is to teach them how to play harp. The only thing that's kind of the big roadblock in the way here is my soundboard on my harp is broken. So my harp has been shipped off to Chicago to the manufacturing company, it's called Lion and Healy Harps, um, and I'm waiting to get it fixed. So that's where I need your help. <laughs> if you could open up your hearts and open up your wallets and donate to this cause to help me heal my harp so that I can help heal the hearts of others and get this nonprofit organization off the ground, making my dream a reality. Harpist Healing Hearts is deeply rooted um, in my life. Uh, the idea has been kind of a dream I've had for a while, but I really wanted to give you guys some background about where it came from um, and why it does exist and is so meaningful to me. So um, I filmed this a little bit earlier, but I wanted to add it to the video just so you guys could kind of get a little bit into my head. All right, thanks. And so my mom was diagnosed with cancer in August of 2007, and then, or sorry, September of 2007. And then in August 2008, um, she passed away of lung cancer. There's one day in particular that kind of really grounded the fact that my mother was sick for me. We had just cut her all her hair off and we'd been joking and laughing about it and making it lighthearted and it hadn't really sunk in until we were sitting and waiting in this other lobby and I had brought with me, I think I was my college algebra textbook and I was reading it and I look over at my mother and she's just like sitting and staring at the floor and it you could just see in her face what she had been hiding for months. All of the fear, all of the pain, all of the just terrifying things that were going on in and around her in this day and in this moment. And she was not hiding it. And it was, for me, a moment when I realized she's scared and for the first time in 20 years, I have to hold her hand and tell her it's going to be okay. And at that point, nobody was playing any music in the lobby. Um, and then a pianist came and started actually playing a few, within a few minutes later. And I remember it just kind of like snapped her out of it. And then she just looked at me and smiled and she was like, what are you reading about? You know, and I had to be strong for her. And it was a pivotal moment for me with my mother's illness because it just really real made me realize like this is bigger than I ever imagined and what can I do like can I fix this can I save this is there anything I can do and my mother really loved music and she raised my brothers and I playing instruments and my oldest brother was a bassoonist and my youngest brother plays the oboe and the viola and then I'm the harpist and so we would play music for her and 
that was our way of helping her, it was playing music for her. And on the darkest days, when we had the worst news, when we had to be at Moffitt for 10 hours, and it was just nerve-wracking, we always had her with an iPod or took her down to the lobby and let her listen to, there was generally a pianist. A lot of times, too, there was a lap harpist. This other young woman would play harp there with a lap harp. And it would distract her from the pain of what was happening and kind of numb her and give her peace of mind for five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour, however long she needed it. That's what I want to do. Um, I want to play music for them. They need something to, to pull them through the darkness. And for some people it's faith and it's hope. And then for other people, music and it's family and it's friends and it's laughter and sometimes even denial but whatever it is they need it and they need it to help them be strong and fight this awful fight and I want to help do that I want to play my harp for your friends your family your children your mother your father when they're sick be it their favorite song for five minutes might give them some peace of mind and distract them from what they're going through.